Father, I pray that um, your Holy Spirit would energize us in this moment, that you would open our hearts and our eyes and our mind to the truth of your word. And I pray that every need that is here, whatever that need may be, that you would meet that need according to your riches that are in Christ Jesus. And since you're rich beyond imagination, you can meet every need. So we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now before you take a seat, when I walked in here this morning, I asked my normal thing, hey, how are you doing? And I bet you I got this 15 times. Oh, I'm here. This is one of those I'm just here kind of mornings. Can I get a witness on that? Um, so so here, here's what I want us to do. Before you take your seat, I want this to be more than just an I'm here Sunday. I, I want this to be I am here. And so would you turn to your neighbor and just say, hey, you're more than just here. Can you do that? And, and encourage them and then you can have a, then you can have a seat. Amen. You have your Bibles. If you have your Bibles, I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. No dinner plans, just the book of Ephesians chapter 1. And while you're opening your Bible to the book of Ephesians, I want you to, if you brought your Who's Your One card, would you please take that out? Would you please take that out? And if you don't have one with you, there are two things you can do. We have some that are right over here that you can get in just a moment because at the end of this service, when I get done preaching, we're going to take the names of um, these folks that we're going to be praying for that they might come to know Christ and we're going to lay them right here at the foot of this cross. Then we're going to transfer them to the prayer wall that you saw down in the Welcome Center. Now, if you don't have one of these with you, uh, we do have some more on the way, but you can take the blue card or the brown card the Vista card or the prayer card that's right in front of you. And today you can use that as your who's your one card. And we'll, we'll, you can write the name of the person you're praying for and you can put them down on, uh, we'll put them down there on the um, foot of the cross and so on. Um, I've already had the young man that I'm, I've been talking to the last week or so and he texted me, he's out of town. But he just texted me and reminded me, would you please make sure that I'm on your Who's Your One card, okay? If you have your Bible, Ephesians chapter 1, and I'm not going to preach very long. I'm really, that's really true. I have preached since last Sunday morning till t tonight. I have preached eight times. And so I'm, I'm trying to save up for tonight. Now, you don't want to miss this afternoon. If you... You need to get yourself over to New Seasons Baptist Church. We are going to have a great time, and uh, it's going to be a great, just a great time. And I want to encourage you, Now we've got some ushers and greeters going to be helping us out. You make your way over there. It's going to be a great time of worship. I'd arrive early. It's going to be a great time of fellowship. So here's what I want to do this morning real quick. I want to talk to us from the Word about the blessings of salvation. The blessings of salvation. And then I want to ask the question, why is it important to know the blessings of salvation? Now, I, I think sometimes we forget how important it is that God has saved us. And so we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 1. Last week we preached from the first two or three verses, the first two verses. Let's look at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Can we get a witness on that? Can we say amen on that? So what are these blessings in heavenly places? Well, here they are. Even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world 
that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love, He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ. According to the purpose of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace with which He has blessed us in the Beloved. Verse 7, in Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our sins, our trespasses, according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of His will, according to His purpose, which He set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in Him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In Him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will, so that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be to the praise of His glory. In Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in Him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory and all the people said amen so here are eight blessings are you ready for these mark them down write them down eight blessings notice if you will in verse 4 he says that we were chosen in Jesus Christ before the foundation of the world and then look in verse 5 and 6 he says and we were predestined to be adopted as sons, here's the generic, sons and daughters of God. Now, those two words, don't let chosen and predestined make you afraid, okay? Because they're in the Bible. But here, here's what I want to say about just those two blessings of being chosen and, and predestined to become adopted as sons of God. This lets us know that God's plan of salvation is not plan B. Now listen to me very carefully. This is what I hear a lot from, from people throughout the years. Here's the way think God, they think God worked out His plan of salvation. He created the world and He put human beings in it. And they messed it up with their sin. And this shocked God. This surprised Him. He wrung His hands and at the last minute devised a plan to send his son into the world to save sinners. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible lets us know that while we're willing to choose, while we choose and turn from our sins, I do that. We also know that God chooses. God is willing and doing his purpose. And so, so what I want to tell you is, is that when you see the word chosen and predestined and elect, some people get really nervous about those words. Well, they're not. They just remind us that there is, there is a bigger plan than just what we see in the plan of salvation. And so I just want you to know that the good thing, the blessing, is to know that we're chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we, were, we are predestined to become sons and daughters of God according to the purpose of his will look at the third blessing look down if you will in verse 7 I love this because of this plan God says I have redeemed you you have been redeemed look what it says if you will in verse 7 it says in him we have redemption through his blood so if you will God's eternal plan that he has worked out from eternity past is worked out in time when Jesus Christ died on a cross and shed his blood for sinners. Can I get a witness on this? We are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We are redeemed. Now the word redeemed means to buy back. And so, if you will, the picture here is of the sinner who is on the auction block, if you will. We have been sold into slavery in sin by our sin. And what does our Savior do? Our Savior purchases us at the expense of His own life. We 
have been redeemed. Now, I'm going to say more about this in just a minute, about what this means. But let me give you a fourth blessing, and I'm going to go through these pretty quick. Look in verse 7, the latter part of verse 7, and then verse 8. Not only have we been redeemed, but our sins have been forgiven. Look what it says. It says, we have been redeemed, redemption to his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, verse 8, which he lavished upon us with all wisdom and insight. Now, here's what I want you to know. The plan of God to save sinners means that God redeemed us through the blood of his son and that he forgives us of our sins. I, this is big because people don't believe it. In the 40 years that I've been in the ministry, I, I bet you I've heard a thousand times thousand times pastor i know god can forgive so and so and so and so and so and so but if he ever knew what i did he could not forgive such and such and such and such and such and such and i'm just going to tell you that the power of god in jesus christ to save and redeem sinners means that he can forgive our sins and because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ get this all of our trespasses have been forgiven by the riches of his grace by the lavished on us even with all wisdom and insight I'm still not convinced you believe that some of you but God has forgiven you God has forgiven you. What a blessing. What a blessing. When I, when I think of my own life and I think of all the blessings that God has given me, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and he, it will surprise you what the Lord has done. One of the greatest blessings is not just health, not family, not all those. Those are good blessings. It is a blessing that He forgives sinners. He has forgiven us in Jesus Christ. Christ. So this magnificent salvation from eternity past moves itself into time as we're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and He forgives us of all our sin. Here's another blessing. The Bible tells us that not only He gives us the knowledge of God, look if you will in verse 9 and 10, I love this. Verse 9 and 10, it says that He has made known to us the mystery of His will according to his purpose which he set forth in christ a plan there's a plan here and notice it says to unite all things in him in heaven and on earth you ever wonder how something works you ever pick up something and look at it to see how it works what well here's the blessing now get this and we need the, this blessing it's the blessing of the knowledge of the purposes of god when you came to faith in Christ, not only, not only were you redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, not only were your sins forgiven, but guess what? God let you in on how things are going to go in the universe. Did you get that? That when we come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, the veil is dropped, the scales are off, and we get, in general, the mystery of the purposes of God. Can I preach to you in five minutes my whole Bible sermon? You all ready for it? God created the world. And in the first five books of the Bible, it says He created Genesis. He delivers us Exodus. Leviticus, He teaches us. Numbers, He counts us. Deuteronomy, He instructs us. The latter part of the book of the Old Testament are the prophets that God speaks to us. He created a people to deliver them out of sin, and He speaks to them through His prophetic word. And then He does it through poetry, He does it through prophets, He does it through the Psalms, so that in the fullness of time, God could send forth His Son 
born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those of us who are under the law, that we might receive adoptions as sons and daughters of God. So the plan that began at creation, through the first five books of the Bible, the plan that was adopted and affirmed by the prophets in the prophetic writings of the Old Testament, now comes to fruition in the person of Jesus Christ, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then because of his death and resurrection, he ascends to the Father, the Spirit comes, the church is born, and the rest of the New Testament, all the way to the book of Revelation, is about how the church ought to function. And then Revelation tells us that one day, the one who created everything will come back to resolve everything, and that, brothers and sisters, is the whole Bible in five minutes. And guess what? When you come to faith in Jesus Christ, you get the point. God kind of pulls the curtain back of eternity. And because of who you are in Jesus Christ, he has made known to us the mystery of his will. Now, if you're a Christian and you're still wandering around saying, oh my gosh, I wonder how things are going to turn out. I can tell you how things are going to turn out. Jesus wins because he has won. And he's coming back. He's going to take his church out. We will be with him forever. He'll throw death and hell and Satan into the bottomless pit. That's the second death. And we will reign with him forever. Aren't you glad you have that knowledge? Can I get a witness on this? So a part of the blessing of salvation is chosen in him being eternity past. You can get your brain around that one. Predestined to become children of God, and then in time and space, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, our sins are forgiven, and guess what? We get the punchline of the story. Here's another blessing, and I love this. Not only all of that, but we're heirs. Look what it says in verse 11. It says that we have been made heirs. We have been made heirs. We have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. We have an inheritance. Um, if you have a rich relative that likes you, isn't that great? Let me tell you what money will do to you. Money will make you stupid and crazy. But we have an inheritance. We have an inheritance in Christ that is sealed and tucked away forever in heaven. And you know what that inheritance is? It's many things, but it's the inheritance of eternal life. It's the inheritance that we have in Christ that this is not all there is. It's the inheritance that in heaven there will never be a I'm just here kind of day. That's inheritance. That's inheritance. I want you to notice a couple of, I love this, look in verse 12. Notice what it says. Verse 12, it says, So that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. Hope. Isn't it ironic? I want you, everybody kind of look up here and I want you to get this. Did you know that the economy's rolling? You know, money's up. Unemployment's down. You know what's also up? Suicide. How's that? And of all ages. And you know, you know what I think the problem is? I know the problem is. When you jettison God, you kick God overboard, and you make hope in material things. You make hope in political things. You make hope in relational things. You make hope in your family. You make hope in all those things. And it's not wrong to have some money. It's not wrong to 
have political opinions. It's not wrong to have a family. It's not wrong with any of that. But I'm going to tell you right now, your money ain't going to get you to heaven. And your money won't make you happy. Politics is not going to solve your problem. In fact, it may make you more miserable. Can I get a witness on that? If you, and it's good to have a family, but boy, your family can disappoint you. Do you get what this says? It says that one of the blessings of salvation is the hope we have in Christ. You know what hope is? Hope is what makes you get up when it's one of those I'm just here kind of days. One final blessing. Look at verse 13 and 14. It's the blessing of being secure in Jesus Christ. Look what it says. In Him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation, your salvation, believed in Him, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee. He's the guarantee of our inheritance. Now, here's what the Bible teaches. Now, listen. The Bible teaches the security of the believer. If you have truly been saved, you cannot be unsaved. Can I get a witness on this now? And the, one of the reasons, there are many reasons, but one of the reasons is you didn't save yourself. You're not saved by works, you're saved by grace as you put your faith in Christ. And even a Christian who, who for a time may be disobedient, if they're truly a believer, will never ultimately fall away. Now, there may be come, some that come and they, they look like Jesus, they talk like Jesus, but they're like some of the seed in the, in the parable of the sower and the seed. The seed fell on the hard ground in immediate unbelief. The seed fell in the stony ground and it was no root, but it, for a while it kind of looked like it was going to take. The seed fell in the thorny ground and, and through for the... The, the difficulties of life, it, it didn't bear any fruit either. And then the seed fell into good soil. Now I want you to hear me and hear me good. God, when He saved you, His Holy Spirit sealed you. Sealed that commitment, that belief, that faith that you have in Christ. So that ultimately, even, even when the ember burns low, there's still a flame there. And how many of us in this room, brothers and sisters, I have, where man, you're going along in the Christian life, and I mean the torches are burning red hot, right? You know what I'm talking about. Jesus is real. He's all that. Your love and life, it's great. And then all of a sudden, you will hit a stretch where that little thing, you start singing, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. But I have good news for you. One of the blessings of salvation is that once he has sealed you, he will keep you all the way home. Now, why do we need to know these blessings? So let me remind you of who he was writing to. Paul was writing these blessings on salvation to a church that was involved or to a church that was planted in one of the most pagan cities. So can I remind you, Inglewood Baptist Church, you do know where we're located, don't you? Inglewood Baptist Church is located in the most liberal section of the most liberal city in the state of Tennessee. And God has chosen to plant a church and to keep a church called Inglewood Baptist Church right here 
in the hood. Can I get a witness on this? And so what we have here is we're like the church at Ephesus. In, the, in, in Ephesus, to whom he's writing these blessings, reminding them that God's plan wasn't plan B. This plan started before time began. And then you're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Your, your sins are forgiven. You've been given the inside knowledge to the mystery of God's purposes. And on top of that, you have an inheritance. And on top of that, you have a hope. And on top of that, you have a security in Jesus Christ that enables you to not lose your head when everybody else does. So, listen up now. Here we go. Why do we need to know these? You know what? Because we say to the atheist, and we present to them... The undeniable truth that there is a God. We say to the agnostic who is not sure that there is a knowledge that you can have about life and the world and time and space that is in Jesus Christ that you can know without a shadow of a doubt, that you can know, that you can know, that you can know that you, can know that you are His. We say to the cynic, those cynics were considered the philosophers of their day. We say to the cynic, the pessimist, we have any pessimist in our room today? We say to the cynic that you can have hope that the glass is not half empty, it's half full. Not because you're some cheesy Tony Robbins guy, but because you know that there's a God in heaven who has given you a hope that the world can't steal from you. We say to the skeptic, those people who are always scratching their head and they're always uncertain, we say to them that yes, there may be many things that you can't know, but here's one thing you can know. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds tomorrow and his name is Jesus Christ. We say to the lonely in Ephesus, we say to the lonely in Inglewood, that there is a God in heaven who will draw up adoption papers, sign them in his own blood, and adopt you into the family of God as a son and daughter of God. To the sinner, we say that God, didn't potentially forgive your sins on the cross, but because of his shed blood, he not only bought you off the auction block of sin, but he will forgive every sin that you have ever committed, past, present, and future. We say to the heartbroken that there is a God in heaven who has given us every blessing in Christ and that in him there is no ultimate loneliness. We say to the troubled of heart, there is a peace and balm in Gilead. And we say to the weary, we say to the weary that God has sealed you and will keep you all the way home. What are the blessings of salvation? They're magnificent. Why do we need to know these blessings? Because all these people exist right here. They do. So, just a couple of days ago, I was uh, going to meet with somebody, and I got there a little early. And I had taken a book with me, and y'all know how much I love coffee. You know, we're going to drink coffee in heaven. Can I get a witness on that? And uh, I got a cup of coffee, and I went over, and I'm, I'm reading this book. And, uh, you know, I got my head in a book like this, and I've got my glasses on. I'm looking professorial, you know. And the Lord said, Kevin, just put your book down and just watch. So I just watched until my meeting guy showed up and I just started seeing that in in walked into this coffee shop uh, a 
transgendered man with long lines in his face of unhappiness, it seemed like. I looked over here, and there was a girl over here on a computer, and it looked, she, I don't know why, she just looked like that kind of girl that she's just there by herself. Just, maybe she went to the coffee shop because just the noise, being around people. I saw the guy walk in who was full of himself. He just walks in. He's owning the place. And I thought, I wonder what his need is. And the whole time, I'm, I'm, this, this message is stewing in my brain. Because you see, what we believe is not just ivory tower. It's not just for in here. All these blessings, chosen, predestined, forgiven, redeemed, hope, all these things. It, this is real stuff. This is real stuff that people need. People need the Lord. And so, why do we, what do we believe? I told you, why do we believe it? Because all those people I listed in the list could go on, need the Lord. So, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Here's our invitation. Um, you take out your card, would you please? And again, if you don't have your card, um, that's okay. You can take one of those blue or brown cards there in front of you. And I hope all this week you've been praying about who you're going to put on there. Actually, I need to... It says, who's your one... I need to change mine to who's your two. That's okay. So I'm going to ask you to take a moment to write down the name of that person that God has laid on your heart. Who is your one that you're going to, in this season in our church, you're going to be trying to communicate to them the blessings of our salvation, of what it means to be saved. You got it? You take a pen. And I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer, and I'll be first. So I'm going to rip my card off here. And uh, so what I'm going to do with this is uh, after we pray, and I'm going to ask Carolyn, Carolyn, would you come and, and uh, play the piano for us as we do this? And, and uh, let's stand together, will you please? And um, let's... Let's ask the Lord to bless us on this day. And you come. You just come and start from the back or the front. It doesn't matter. And uh, let me pray for us. And you come and just put those names right here on this, uh, at the foot of the cross. And if you don't have anything to write on, we have some of these cards up here. So let's, uh, and you can take time for right up here in just a moment to write your name. So let's pray. Father. As we uh, do this act of faith and we're thinking about all the blessings of salvation that you have blessed us with in heavenly places in Christ, help us to have a burden to share this with a lost world that needs the good news. In Jesus' name, amen. You just come right now and place these.